What you guys got another video here for you. Do you need an antivirus for Windows 10? And what antivirus should I use for Windows 10? I get asked that question all the time. And believe it or not, it comes down to what you're doing on the internet and how clued up you are at what you're doing. So if you've got no common sense and you're clicking on stuff and you fall for uh, stuff on the internet saying you've won a free iPhone and you go clicking on it, then you're more than likely going to get scammed and get infected or end up getting hit with ransomware. So what is the best solution for you? Well, it comes down to a couple of choices, whether you want to use free or paid. Now, personally, if you go for paid, you get a lot less hassle uh, and it's not a lot of money. Uh, but believe it or not, it's a pretty decent option for people that are uh, clicking on stuff all the time, downloading all sorts of stuff on the Internet and it's going to protect you a lot better. Now, that's not to say that free antivirus programs can't do a good job. It's just the fact that you get a few more features on the paid software. Now, someone already asked me to do a review of Kaspersky Internet Security. And to be honest, it is pretty much what it is. It's probably one of the best, if not the best, um, antivirus program out there. It's very close with Bitdefender. It's a toss up between those two. But if you get a really good antivirus program or internet security program like this one, then you're pretty much going to be really safe on the internet. So let's take a look at what Kaspersky Internet Security has to offer. So you can see here, this is the main page. It's very simple and very uh, plain uh, interface here. So you've got your scan button, which will give you the options to run scans, whether you want to run full scans, quick scans, a selective scan and you can see here you can select a certain folder to add or you can just drag and drop stuff into here and it will scan and find out what that is now if it's a particular file that you've downloaded off the internet and you're not too sure you can always drag and drop it into here I wouldn't recommend you even touch the file to be honest it's just in case you click on it and it starts to uh, it starts to open and install itself onto the system so external uh, device scan as well here and you've also got your task manager here as well and you've got your scheduled task here to uh, run scheduled scans you can set this up to what you want to do so vulnerability scan you can do this run a scan manually and you can set it up for every day every weekday and so on monthly and, and all that sort of good stuff so let's uh, move down to the next tab which will be your database update you can run your database update manually here and last updated 57 minutes ago and it's set to run automatically you got your safe money here and this is when you want to make purchases uh, on the internet criminals can access your credit card data and steal your money so don't let it happen how does it work you can go through all of this once you uh, get yours, you can go to the website and read all this stuff. I'm not going to spend too much time in here, but you can add a website here to uh, your safe money area here. So, for instance, if it's your bank or PayPal, you can add it inside here and it will keep it safe. Let's move on uh, to privacy protection here. When you click on privacy protection, this gives you uh, webcam protection. So you can say prevent spying on your webcam. Now we all know uh, the NSA have already said that they can connect up via your webcam if they wanted to and see you on the other side of it. And that sent alarm bells out across the world with people disconnecting all of their webcams. Unfortunately, if you've got a, if you've got a laptop with a webcam on it, you're going to have to put a bit of tape over it or something like that. But yeah, so that just protects you there. So you've got your private browsing as well protects against collection of information about your activities on websites. You can only gather statistics or block data collection altogether. And attempts here, you can see 208. Let's go back and you've got your protection for your kids. So I don't use this feature, but if you've got children, young children in your household that use that computer, you can set this up to protect them. I'm not going to go through all of this. Uh, if you want to see this sort of stuff, let me know in the comments section below and I'll be happy to try and cover that in another video. 
Uh, this is your Mike Kaspersky. You can sign in here and connect you to their account so you basically won't have to worry about your license key or any of that sort of stuff. It will remember it because you'll be connected via this uh, sign in uh, process here. You've got this more tools area here and this is where all of your security features are going to be. So you've got your security here, you've got your cloud protection. This uses a cloud based database to, to, to detect dangerous uh, files and stuff like that immediately. So when you click on here, you can see here I've disconnected this. But if you want to connect, this means that you will be connected via the Kaspersky uh, security network. And it really is a really good feature. Again, without this, it's still a great feature. OK, so if you want to connect up, you can just click on the participate in Kaspersky security network. If you want to learn more about it, you just click on this and it will tell you exactly what this feature is. You can see it's called KSN and it says when a new threat is encountered, users automatically send information about it and our virus lab using the KSN. And based on the data, virus lab experts assigned to each file websites, applications, and reputation, status, and so on. It's all sent back. So it's basically collecting a little bit of information and uh, about viruses and about malware and all that sort of stuff, and it will send it back to them, which makes the product a lot better. So if you do want to participate, you can connect up here, but you will still get perfectly good protection without that feature enabled. OK, so moving on to the next one is your quarantine. This is where you're going to quarantine all your files that get found on your computer. And again, you've got on screen keyboard and Kaspersky Rescue Disk. You can create a Kaspersky Rescue Disk from here. And basically, this is how you can do it. You see me use those before. Pretty decent bit of kit. And you can use the secure connection here to secure data transfer. This is their VPN, as you can see here. Use the VPN by using secure connection may be regulated. So it is, is regulated. OK, and also a network monitor. This is your network monitor shows you what's going on on your network. This is monitoring everything you're doing. You can see all the IP addresses here and you've got a bunch of other stuff here that is uh, monitoring as well. And this is your so if you wanted to basically block stuff, you can do. So, for instance, if you right click in here, you can open the application network rules, all network rules. This is another video, basically, but you can actually uh, edit these rules and block things and, and stuff like that. OK, so let me come back out of here. OK, so we've got uh, manage applications, software updater, application control. So obviously, software updater is just to run your database update. And then you've got your application control, which monitors applications and blocks dangerous activities. So this is really good as well. And you can see the CPU here and your disk gives you all the information here. And it's monitoring your PC and applications and stuff like that. And normally malware, once it starts hitting the system, it will start to be picked up because this will be monitoring it and it will start to detect what's going on and block it. OK, so we've got trusted application mode here. This allows only trusted applications to be used. And this will be a Kaspersky database, of course. So what all the programs are listed on there will run on your system. If they're not on that list, they are not going to run when you enable this feature. So if you're one of those people that don't download a lot of programs, or you're using sort of peculiar programs that are created by people that haven't been registered or trusted, then it might not run. So be careful what uh, sort of programs you do download and use. But if you are one of those people that download a lot of that sort of stuff and it's not on their trusted list, it won't run and it will protect your PC. Uh, run the vulnerability uh, scan there. You can see here the operating system and applications installed on your computer may have vulnerabilities. And uh, basically, you can start a scan here. Uh, moving on to the uh, clean and optimize PC cleaner helps you delete unnecessary applications. As you can see here, you click on this and you can run this and it will update it all. You got your settings here as well. I'm going to spend too much time on this sort of stuff, but you can turn these features on and off as well. 
you got your privacy cleaner here this cleans all the traces of your activity again pretty much like just one of those junk cleaner files you know that cleans all your browser history and stuff like that I would have thought and you've got your browser configuration here and we've also got Microsoft troubleshooting so if you've got uh, problems here you can run this Microsoft troubleshooting here here you got your reports and this is all your reports for what's going on on your computer and it will report everything back here so you can see neutralized uh, full scan quick scan and you've got a bunch of other stuff on here as well rootkit scan and loads of other bits and pieces so let's go back okay so let's uh, just go into the settings here this is on this little cog here you can click on this and it will take you to the general area now inside the general area you can see here perform recommended actions this is all done by default you don't have to uh, mess with this sort of stuff but you can change the security level here and you can also manage the settings here as well you can restore the settings, export settings and import settings from this location. Moving on to your protection here, you've got your file antivirus here, web antivirus, you've got app application control here, firewall, and you've got a bunch of other stuff like privacy browsing, webcam protection, all this sort of stuff. This is where you can toggle stuff on and off, the stuff that you want to use, okay? So if you don't want it on, you can toggle it off like so. But I'm going to can cancel that one but if you want to you can do performance this is where you've got user game mode and all this all sort of stuff here I'm not going to cover this too much but basically you can pause file antivirus here as well you've got your scan and it's on recommended but you've got your high recommended and low and you've got a bunch of other stuff inside here like notify disinfect and uh delete scan root folder only and you can scan entire device inside here advanced settings gives you these areas down here as well and additional will give you your update secure data input and so on this is all your other area here your appearance and stuff so that is it that is Kaspersky in a nutshell Okay, so to finish off, is Kaspersky Internet Security worth the money? Now, I've got a two-year license agreement here with Kaspersky Internet Security. And personally, I think it is because you're going to get protection from ransomware. And that's what scares me the most, is getting hit with ransomware and losing everything because that stuff is nasty. And if you've got one that can't be decrypted, it can be devastating. Now, I do back all my data up and stuff like that. And again, with the sort of stuff I'm doing online, I want to protect myself as much as possible. And I can do that with Kaspersky Internet Security. Can you get away with that with Windows Defender? Uh, I was using Windows Defender for a while, and uh, that's because I'm not stupid and I don't click on stuff. Uh, but the problem is it takes one second to make a mistake and click on it and it's too late and it won't block it. And that's the problem. So I've, you know, bit the bullet and gone with uh, Kaspersky Internet Security again. I've had Bitdefender in the past paid versions, but I've now gone with uh, this version of Kaspersky, and uh, I'm pretty happy with the choice, to be honest. And if you want to see other tests out there, there's people that have done that on YouTube. I think uh, the PC Tech Channel has done uh, tests with Kaspersky Internet Security with malware and also with ransomware. So check his channel out. He's done loads of tests. His name's Leo. Nice guy. Go and check him out. He's a pretty decent guy for that sort of content. Anyway, that's going to be about it. I'm starting to waffle on. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching, guys. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and then hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.